On behalf of Touch Football Australia, welcome to the Inferno National Touch League Tournament Briefing. Please ensure you have your manager's pack and the conditions of entry next to you while we go through this presentation and refer to those documents throughout for further information. Touch Football Australia would like to acknowledge our NTL event partners, Destination New South Wales, Coffs Harbour City Council and Inferno. We thank them for their ongoing support. Should you need assistance in the lead up to or during the event, the names of the relevant tournament officials and key contacts are on your screen. Mobile phone numbers of those individuals are in your manager's pack. So please contact any of these individuals and they'll be sure to help you. Touch Football Australia will be communicating via the NTL specific team app, the TFA and NTL websites, our social media accounts and in the event of emergency, stadium PA system. Should we need to contact tool leaders directly, we will contact you via mobile phone if urgent. However, we will also provide daily newsletter updates on generic event information which will be available on the NTL team app. As we mentioned, TMAP will play a large role in our communication, so we encourage everyone to download TMAP, which is available from the App Store or Google Play. Simply search for TMAP, and once you have downloaded and registered for TMAP, search for National Touch League. The app will include all the news and provide push notifications in the event that we need to communicate en masse. It will also be the best place to check results ladders and finals progressions. You can also see on the right hand side of your screen the social media handles Touch Football Australia will be using during the tournament. This year the results will only be available online. There will be no physical results board area. To view the results on Team App, go to National Touch League, then Fixtures and Results. Or to view the results on the TFA website, go to touchfootball.com.au. Under the competitions tab, go to National, then National Touch League and select the division you would like to view. We will now cover off on some risk management items and policies that are in play at the event. The Protect Against COVID-19 at Touch Football guidelines will be implemented at the Inferno National Touch League. To ensure we are complying with New South Wales public health orders, we have additional measures for COVID-19 management. It will be extremely important that anyone who is feeling unwell or has any COVID-19 symptoms does not attend the NTL or enter the event venue. There will be separate spectator and event participant entry and exit points throughout the venue. All spectators will need to check in and out of the venue using the QR codes at the specific spectator entry and exit gates. Referees, players and team staff will be issued with an event pass that allows them to move through the venue via the participant entry and exit points. You will also need to follow the additional guidelines on when you can be on site and use this pass. Sanitise your hands on entry and exit. Sanitizer will be available at these points. Turn on the government COVID safe app and leave it on while at the venue. Reduce your time at the venue by following the get in, play, get out procedure where possible. Spectators are to be a minimum of five metres back from the playing field. Where possible, these fields will be roped off. Please stand behind the ropes. For everyone except the teams who are warming up or playing, you will need to practice social distancing and keep 1.5 metres apart at all times and are not to congregate in groups. If social distancing cannot be followed by attendees, the venue may have to be closed to spectators. Entities are required to provide their own medical staff at the event. A doctor and physio are available for serious injuries. Should you need a doctor or physio, please flag TFA event staff, identifiable by the fluoro yellow and navy event staff shirts, 
who will radio through for assistance to the relevant field or location. TFA has adopted the AIS and the Australian Medical Association's Concussion in Sport Policy and will again be implementing this at the event. Further details on this concussion policy can be found in your manager's pack or by visiting their website. Unfortunately, we have experienced inclement weather at national events in the past. Therefore, if we do so again, either the hot weather policy or the wet weather policy contained within the TFA extreme weather guidelines will come into effect. Please listen to the ground announcer and communications from the tournament officials if they will be implemented depending on the weather. There are several risks associated with team tents and the bringing in of various equipment into the facility. All this is covered in your manager's pack. This year due to COVID-19, a few procedures will not be allowed to occur. Entity tents will need to operate differently and will only be permitted to be used if they are used for medical purposes only. There are no other person, for example, parents or spectators allowed in the tent area. Entities provide a COVID safe officer and abide by the tent capacities for each individual tent. We do ask that electrical items brought into the stadium are tagged and tested and compliant with Australian standards prior to bringing them into the facility. There will be no water access to the tent area this year. No ice baths or showers are to be done on site. All post-game recovery requiring water is to be done off-site in a socially distanced and COVID safe manner. In the past, entities have provided food for teams within their tents. This year, food cannot be provided on site. Buffet or cocktail style self-service foods are not allowed under the COVID safe guidelines. There will be two canteens, the hub cafe, a coffee vendor, and a few other food outlets in operation at the stadium. It is important that if you are preparing meals off site, please make sure you abide by food handling standards so that we avoid any outbreaks of food poisoning or gastro that will impact the health and well-being of participants and the running of the event. Finally, should we need to evacuate the stadium for any reason, please listen to Stadium PA and abide by the instructions provided by the ground announcer or your nearest TFA Stadium staff member. The assembly area will be field 5 to 7. For those that have been to a National Touch League event before in Coffs Harbour, you will be aware that traffic and parking can be quite busy at times, so we therefore ask that you do adhere to speed limits and road signs around the venue and use caution at all times when driving and walking throughout the stadium precinct. There are a number of parking areas around the stadium which you can see on your screen. We do ask that small and larger buses park in the bus parking area at the southern end of the stadium. We also ask that you respect the disabled parking bays which are located in the main stadium car park in the first row of bays. Please avoid parking in these disabled bays as we've had issues in the past where abled body drivers are taking up valuable disabled parking spaces and we ask for your cooperation there. Please use common sense while driving around the tournament and event precinct. There will be no vehicle access into the tent area located on the car park or into the stadium. There will be separate entry and exit points around the venue for participants and spectators. Spectators will be required to check in via QR codes provided around the venue entry points and show security on the way in. It is very important that spectators check out when leaving the venue. Event participants will be provided with an event pass and are required to use this to access the fields via participant entry and exit points. The venue is a totally non-smoking venue, so we ask that everyone refrains from smoking anywhere throughout the Coffs Harbour Stadium area. It is also a dry zone up until 12pm Saturday 
absolutely no BYO is allowed, so please make sure your participants and spectators are aware of this. There will be a bar available in the main grandstand on Saturday. There will be overnight security for the main event precinct, but as always we recommend that no valuable items are left behind because the security guards can't be everywhere at the one time. Just a general reminder too that no spectators are to be within 5 metres of a field that is in play. So if you are watching your teams, please make sure your players and spectators, your officials, are back 5 metres from the field. There will be a number of ropes or markings around the outer fields to designate the 5 metre barrier. This is for your safety and the players and spectators as well. In terms of training fields, we please ask you to avoid warming up or cooling down on actual playing surfaces. There is plenty of space around the fields. We ask for your cooperation to protect the playing surface for our event, but also for the many other users that frequent the stadium ongoing. In addition to Touch Football Australia staff, Coffs Harbour Stadium staff will be able to help entities with access to water and power and general facility inquiries. Please flag a TFA event staff and we will be able to put you in contact with the Coffs Harbour Stadium staff member. In terms of the disciplinary protocol, the key information is in your manager's pack. The main point that we want to raise on this particular slide is for you to be aware that the team can be penalised for the behaviour of officials and spectators. We would hate to see a vital game decided by the behaviour of someone off the field. So please make sure that you have advised all spectators and officials that their behaviour off the field can have an impact on the on-field result. For the next section, please make sure you refer to the conditions of entry as we go over these key dot points given their significance. NRL Films and Photos are the official photographers of Touch Football Australia. Action shots from the event will be available to purchase from Touch Football's photo shelter, the online photo shop. Uniforms. We do understand that from time to time there are issues with suppliers or players losing gear. However, we do ask you have contingency plans in place to ensure that at all times your players and officials are in correct full uniform. This is a national event and Touch Football Australia is striving for a professional image and it is a media broadcast event so we have an obligation together to ensure our brand is protected and portrayed in the best possible light it can be. Therefore we won't be accepting players and officials that are not in uniform and that goes from an incorrect hat to a different style of shirt. We expect that all teams are in exactly the same uniform and we do ask for your cooperation with this during the tournament. Also, in the event that a player does lose a shirt or a shirt is damaged, we do ask that you change the number of the player at the tournament information area. This is required due to a number of factors. Most noticeably, this is a selection event for a higher representation. So we want to be able to contact the correct individual if they have been selected for those honours. Also, in the event of any disciplinary issues, we want to be able to contact and have the correct player identified for those matters. So please ensure that you do complete a change of number form, if you need to, from the information area to change the player's number. In terms of the proof of eligibility challenges, protests or eligibility claims can be made on days one and two of the event. We will not accept protests or eligibility claims after the completion of play on day two of the event. So if you have noticed anyone who you think might not be eligible, please address it as soon as possible. 
It is the responsibility of each team to allocate an appropriate person to sign the score sheet at the end of each game. The appropriate person can be seen as the coach or team manager. In signing the score sheet, the nominated person on behalf of their team has acknowledged and accepts the information on the score sheet to be correct. This information includes full-time and half-time scores, playing numbers of players, crossing off players not participating in that game, try scorers for both teams and any sin bin or dismissal sanctions. TFA encourages all referees, team players and officials to communicate throughout the game to make sure that all parties have a responsibility in ensuring the scorecard is correct. If you do not agree with the information on the score sheet, do not sign the score sheet and lodge a protest via your tool leader within 30 minutes of the conclusion of the game. The following information is to be provided with the protest. The team that tapped off in the direction of play, the order the scoring occurred, including player numbers of both teams, the halftime and full-time scores. The opposing team will be called to verify the score. If they do not agree or in the event of inconclusive evidence, the score will be recorded as the score the referees have recorded. Alternatively, video evidence can be provided and will be used if conclusive. If the score sheet has not been signed and the time has passed for a protest to be lodged, the information on the score sheet will be recorded. If the information on the score sheet is unclear, the relevant parties may be contacted to confirm. Linked with the accuracy of the score sheet, teams can register up to 16 players each side. However, only 14 players per team can participate in each game. And therefore, we ask before the start of each game, you please cross out any individuals that will not be participating in that particular match. Penalties apply for teams that have more than 14 players participate. If you qualify to participate at NTL and are registered in the particular team, you can play finals regardless of how many preliminary games you have participated in. So any individuals that are not attending the first few days of competition but will turn up later on, please also cross them off the score sheet. A maximum of 20 participants may be present on the playing surface, including the interchange area and permitted coaching positions in each game. For example, six players on the field, up to eight players in the interchange area, two non-players, and therefore in this instance only four officials would be able to be involved. If there are more than 20, event staff will ask you to rectify. All of these participants must be in enclosed footwear, including any injured players. They must either all be in the official on-field playing uniform, if they are a player in the said game, or the off-field entity uniform, if they are a player not playing in the game, or an official such as a coach, manager, or medical staff. Interchanges are to occur within the 20 by 4 metre interchange area, displayed on the right of the screen and only after players leaving the field of play have entered the interchange area. Coaches are permitted to position themselves at the end of the field, five metres back from the dead ball line. However, they cannot issue any verbal or physical commands directly to the team. They are observing only and can only communicate to the team or other staff in the interchange area by returning to the interchange area or by use of electronic communication. Failure to comply will result in the individual being asked to leave the venue for the duration of the game and may result in further action. Event staff will ask you to rectify any of these situations immediately. We do ask that you show event staff respect and listen to their instructions. They will ask you to rectify as they notice any issues 
whether it be on day one or with five minutes to go in the grand final. If you do not wish to be disturbed by event staff, please do the right thing from day one through to your last game. The drop-off rule will be as per the 8th edition playing rules. If it is a draw at the end of regulation time and the drop-off is required, teams will reduce to four players. There will be a tap at halfway by the team that did not commence the match in possession and teams will run in the same direction that they ended the game. There will be a two minute period of time played. If a team is in the lead at the expiration of two minutes, the team is declared the winner and the match is complete. If there is no result after two minutes, the match is paused at the next touch or dead ball. Teams are to reduce to three players. The match will recommence at the same place it was paused and until a try is scored. For further details, please refer to the 8th edition of the playing rules on the Touch Football Australia website. We will now cover off on some finals information. For teams that are lucky enough to make the grand finals, the following provides some information on the presentation elements, particularly for the Opens and Indomie Noodles All Abilities Divisions grand finalists. We ask that all players and officials in these divisions meet at the stadium tunnel 10 minutes prior to the match, ready for your players to be introduced onto the stadium in number order with your captains first. Players will then line up facing the grandstand for the national anthem to be played and then the match will commence. You can see on the screen now a rundown on all presentation timings and locations. The Opens, Indomie Noodles All Abilities Divisions and the Referee Awards presentations will occur on Field 1. All other divisions will occur in the courtyard immediately as you enter the stadium area through the main gates. Individual NTL tour leader meetings will be held on Tuesday at C.X Coffs International Stadium. Please note all tour leaders have access through my sideline to view registered players. We ask that you use this function to ensure your players' details are correct for each team prior to the tournament, as well as any coaching or management staff. Playing shirt numbers for all players are due one week prior to the tournament. Any late registrations will need to attend the tool leader meeting to complete the online registration process. No further registrations will be accepted after this date. That is it in terms of the online tournament briefing presentation. If you have any questions, your first point of call should be your tool leader. If they can't assist you or you are a tool leader, then by all means, please contact Zoe Zanetti at Touch Football Australia who will be able to help you and assist you with your inquiry. We look forward to seeing you all in Coffs Harbour in March.